What's the least amount of money you can spend on a full bathroom remodel? And I'm not talking like a cheesy, like half-baked remodel, but one that's good, you know, like modern, clean, and also functional. So this bathroom is a test case. It is completely run down and in desperate need of a makeover. And I'm gonna do it with the cheapest good materials I can possibly find, DIYing and upcycling along the way wherever I can make it work. All right, so you've had a look around the bathroom, you saw the water damage, you saw the funky little floating shelf. Plumbing's pretty straight up, ABS, only no shutoffs on any of the water lines, which means I gotta go down into the crawl space and shut everything off for the house just in order to decommission the shower and the toilet, the sink and the other tub. So this bathroom job starts here with the entrance to the crawl space. I've got to go all the way to that end. Right. Let me get that way. The tub should be up in here. Okay, so this is the toilet line right here. Tub line comes in from this side. From the other tub, yep, the other shower. All right, so the upshot of that exploratory mission is that I learned that I've got to do all the plumbing from up above. That this is the shutoff for the whole fucking house. Let's see what happens. All right, so with the water turned off, I could start chopping my water lines and capping them. I started with the sink, and you know, I try to pull things out in one piece, but this beastly long vanity just had to be chopped in two. Then I tackled the tub doing the same thing, uh, decommissioning the water lines and capping them. I'm gonna use those guys for the future shower just in a different location. And the floating shelf had to go, kind of a sad thing. That floating shelf definitely had some style. Pulled out the tub, I was a little surprised to learn that it was about three pounds altogether, like the lightest avocado tub you could ever imagine. And I also had to chop up the surround just to get it out of there. The toilet was also sort of a miniature version of a toilet, just kind of low to the ground, pulled it out, stuck it in a plastic bag, as I usually do just to keep things from dripping, and got it out of there. Next up was the shower demo, and it's worth mentioning that I try to be a little bit careful when I do demolition. There's kind of this thing on home remodel TV shows where people like to take a sledgehammer and put it through a wall, but you never know what's in that wall, so it's better to, you know, kind of go slowly and carefully and not destroy things you don't want to destroy. After that, I cleaned up the floor and started chopping into what will be the home of the future plumbing for the uh, stall shower. A uh, waistline, I'm gonna reroute it from here to there. A uh, waistline's under the floor, so I'll just couple on. I'll put the AAV over here. Probably make a little uh, kind of dummy wall back here for the plumbing, so I don't have to tap into this wall. And uh, close all this up. This will be good. Toilet stays there. And then this is the former shower, and you can see there's just a little bit of water damage. I mean, you know, it's good. It's pretty good. But I just gotta cut this, uh, cut this subfloor out, replace it. Um, see if any of the joists are damaged. They actually look pretty good. The joists look all right. I replace this stuff and 86 this plumbing over here. Fortunately, no joists needed to be replaced. They look pretty good. I just uh, 86 another waistline, uh, capped it, and pulled out rotten flooring, and uh, put down some new stuff. And like I said before, all the plumbing unfortunately had to be done from up above. It's nice if you can get in the crawl space and do it down there, but that just wasn't a possibility. So 
somehow it didn't break that. I don't know what happened, but. Often the biggest part of one of these jobs is relocating plumbing. And in this case, it had to move over about six feet for the new shower drain. All right, I'm just laying out the waistline for the tub drain. New tub drain is over here. And uh, first thing I do is just lay out all my fixtures. So I'm gonna... All right, here's my finished uh, drain line set up for the tub. You can see I've got the uh, waistline coming in. I've got the sanitary T here. Um, this goes to the AV, so this is just air. I got an extra tie here. This is gonna be covered with a, a quarter inch subfloor, so the tub won't be up against this. And then this is the uh, waistline. Waistline comes down on, these, on this kind of X point. I put some crosshairs in here just to know exactly where to locate it. Uh, it will be about an inch and three quarters off the subfloor, but I'll just cut it later. So even though there was definitely some water damage in this bathroom, most of the subfloor was pretty solid. It's that kind of greenish blue stuff, three quarter inch. Uh, but I did want to put down a smoother underlayment underneath the vinyl floor. If you ever put down flooring, especially vinyl stuff, it'll just show any little dimple or pockmark or lump or whatever in your flooring. So I cut some sheets of quarter inch and uh, you know marked all the holes where they were gonna go and laid it down just with some staples. There was a void that I forgot to cut the hole for. I just uh, screwed into it. The screw spins, you know there's nothing under there. And then I cut it out with my jigsaw. And before putting the flooring down, I just cleaned once again. You know, you just don't want any little particles or anything underneath your flooring. Swept it a couple times, vacuumed. Then I marked on the wall, distance from the wall to the center of all my objects, you know, like my toilet flange, or my water lines and all that stuff. That way I had a fighting chance to cut my holes in the right places once I got my vinyl flooring out. And you know, there are a bunch of different kinds of vinyl flooring you can get. This is actually a no glue vinyl flooring and you can glue it if you want to but I ended up trimming around the edges and it adheres on its own pretty well. Uh -oh. All right, check it out. We got the floor down. <laughs> There's like a little clash between the wallpaper and the floor but Obviously, this can be painted or shower pan here, toilet where it was. This can be a vanity, and this can be a closet. I don't know if I mentioned that, but this was a stall shower. All right, now some of this is going to seem a little bit out of sequence, but I actually did some priming at this point. You know, the whole bathroom's not built yet, but it's got this wild wallpaper. And to keep costs down, I wasn't going to remove the wallpaper. I was going to paint over it. I also needed to patch some drywall. So I did some wall work. Then I do some more, you know, construction carpentry stuff. Then I would do some more painting. Uh, I just didn't want to get stuck with all the painting at the end. You know, painting takes like a day for one coat, then a day for another. And I don't want to leave that all at the end. All right, more fun in the crawl space. Shutting off the water once again so I could cut off all my plugs. Remember, I plugged all the water lines. Unfortunately, none of the water lines were marked hot or cold. So I had to put a valve on these ones under the shower, run it into a bucket, see which one was hot, and then mark it. I also cut the shower's waistline finally so that I could install this compression based drain flange. And you can see how this drain flange works here. It's got like a little rubber gasket. You kind of slip it over the waistline and inside the drain. Then you put a screw fitting in there and tighten it up. 
Just as a matter of course, I also filled the trap just to avoid getting gassed out. Okay, with another coat of primer on the walls and not the last coat that I actually ended up putting on, it was time to sink the toilet. I put a new gasket on there, climbed up on the toilet to weight it down and bolted it in place. And of course that meant that I could connect my water line and give it a test run. For some reason I saved the old air vent cover. I don't know why I did that, but you can see it on the right there. Just nastified, totally nastified. All right, here's the vanity coming in. Uh, the vanity was a couple inches higher than the old vanity. Everything in that old bathroom was just low. So I had to relocate the receptacle, brought it up eight, 10 inches, put it in a new box and uh, hooked it up. It is GFCI protected at the box. So I tested it just to make sure and could get to installing the plumbing under that vanity cabinet. Just a small touch, but I did add some color-coded text just so that the next guy in the future can tell which one's hot and which one's cold. And then the same deal back behind the shower. The plumbing had to be hooked up and connected to those stubs down below. I ran the pecs up through the kind of dummy wall I put behind the shower pan, connected up the mixer, connected all the plumbing, and that guy was good to go. And actually with that, the plumbing for the entire bathroom was good to go. This is just a really small detail, but I thought I'd show you that at the end of the shower, I built just like a little knee wall, like a little short, I think eight inch wall, just to kind of contain the shower pan. All right, flash over to my shop. Totally different location. I'm in the shop and I've got that old mirror. Remember the mirror I pulled off the wall? Well, I thought I would reuse it and build a medicine cabinet. So I cut it down to size. That was a really big mirror, like a huge mirror. I cut it down and basically just made a door for the mirror and then a cabinet for the door to swing on. And all this was with uh, recycled wood, you know, like old stuff I had in the shop, things that I'd pull out of houses at various times to save money on the one hand, but also because, you know, this stuff is as good as anything. I actually went medicine cabinet shopping. You know, I went to the hardware store and I was like, I'll just buy a medicine cabinet. Those things were crazy expensive, you know, like 200 bucks for a medicine cabinet or the cheap one, there was a $48 medicine cabinet. It was just so chintzy, you know, plastic and just not good. So I wanted to make one. It was fun to make. And I think in the end, you know, more durable, solid and kind of classic looking. All right, back at the house, I had to cut some wallboard. I also cut my pieces of NRP or non-reinforced plastic. This is like waterproof wallboard stuff. 
and it is what I went with with the shower surround. Definitely to save money, but also because I think it's pretty good. You know, if you buy a prefabricated shower surround, you're gonna spend big bucks, like 300, 900 bucks on a shower surround. And this stuff is like 12 bucks a sheet. If you put it in carefully, really carefully with a seal around the edges, and then you glue back behind, you really fit the joints well, and then double seal it, I think it works really well. It's a durable product, waterproof for sure, 100%, and can work really well in a shower. It's not traditional shower board stuff, but I tend to think it works really well if you put it in right. All right, now let's check out what I did with the shower curtain rod. Uh, similar to the medicine cabinet, I went out and priced kind of L-shaped shower curtain rods that would work with the shower pan I was using. And there are a couple out there, but they were like Etsy prices. They were expensive and would have just like blown the budget on this project. So instead, I spent 12 bucks on some copper pipe and some fittings, and I made up a DIY copper rod for the shower curtain. It is attached in two points on the walls and then also to the ceiling. And at each anchor point, there's a screw that goes through the attachment bracket and into the copper. So it's pretty solid. It did take a little bit of touching up with some sandpaper afterwards just because, you know, I had kind of burned it and heated it and all that. And after that, I could swap out the lights. There were three ceiling lights in this bathroom, which is probably too, too many. But instead of removing a couple, I just replaced them with some simple LEDs. All right, back to what was the old shower. And I guess this is technically now called a water closet. You know, it was a shower. I ended up keeping the same configuration and just adding some shelves. This will end up being, you know, kind of like a linen closet in the bathroom. You know, you're working right along, doing one thing after the next, and then you turn around and the project's done. Bathroom complete. Now, I gotta show you a picture from before. Check it out, this was the bathroom originally. It was a bit of a freak show. And for just 2,000 bucks in materials, this bathroom got, I think, thoroughly transformed. Okay, thank you for checking out the project. Comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts, criticisms, critiques, ideas, whatever. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I got all kinds of home renovation projects up here on YouTube.